What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsag. We're doing Intelligence from Hack the Box, which was a really fun Active Directory box that starts out with a web server, but the only thing you're supposed to do is figure out how to brute force PDFs because files are uploaded with the date timestamp. So you build a custom word list, download a bunch of PDFs, which gets you a username and password. You cannot log into the box. Instead, you have to do a bunch of AD enumeration to discover that the user that you have credentials to has the ability to download a PowerShell script that leaks out that the web server is making HTTP requests based upon domain names. The user you have access to is the ability to create a DNS record in the Active Directory database, so you can force them to make a request back to you, which then you can poison and ask for the NTLM hash. The script authenticates to you, you get access to a different user that can read the group managed service account password for the box that has the ability to do constrained delegation, so you can do a silver ticket type of attack to impersonate the administrator user. Sounds like a lot, but let's just jump in because it's simpler than it sounds. As always, we're going to start with the nmap, so dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it intelligence and then the IP address of 10.10.10.248. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have a ton of ports open. And just a quick glance, I see DNS, Kerberos, and LDAP, so I'm going to assume this is indeed Active Directory, but let's go over some ports. DNS on 53, its banner says simple DNS plus, HTTP on port 80, its banner says IIS version 10.0, so it is a recent version of Windows. We have Kerberos, which leaks its server time, which is important if we do some type of Kerberos logins. We'll probably get more into that later in the video. LDAP on 389, you do have the RPC stuff. Uh, the LDAP does leak the actual domain. So let's go into a host file and edit that. So sudo v etsy host, and we can say 10.10.10.248 dc.intelligence.htb, then intelligence.htb, and also just intelligence. Okay, so let's go keep going on the end map, a bunch of other just domain ports, uh, secure LDAP right here, more LDAP. So yeah, that's about it. We do have the clock skew, and this is super important to know there is a clock skew, but DNA, uh, Active Directory servers generally host NTP, so if we ever want to sync a time, we can do that with an NTP command. But let's go keep enumerating this. So there was a web server, and normally I would start there, but testing out null authentication against the domain, see if we can get a user listing, is super quick. So that's where I start. So I'm going to do RPC client. We try to log in. We can't. I'm going to add a dash n to say no password, and then just do enum dom users. And we can't. Also going to try crack map exec. So SMB 10.10.10.248. And this will probably say it's a Windows 10 box. Um, let's try dash dash shares. Then we can try after that um, the password policy. So pass pol. And we can also use crack map exec to try to dump the users with users. And I don't think this works. Let's try this. Um, the shares did give me an error message, I think. Let's look at that again. It says error numerating shares status user session deleted. I'm just going to add um, null for user and password, and then I'm going to remove the password because I think crack map exec um, behaves differently based upon how you do those things. I'm not sure if it's changed, but yeah. So I think if we don't specify the password, it's like not specifying the user, but you can see. There is definitely a difference when you specify user and password versus um, nothing. So there's no real enumeration we can do there. So let's take a look at the website. So 10.10.10.248. And then I'm also going to do intelligence.htb and then dc.intelligence.htb just to make sure there's no type of virtual host routing. All these pages go to the same place. We do have a lorem ipsum. Uh, email address, if I hit subscribe, let's do at test.com. Also, when we do this, open up a developer tools. We could do Burp Suite as well, but developer tools is just as good if we want to check this. And we're not doing any post request and looking at all the gits. It doesn't look like we actually sent data with that. So I'm going to ignore that. We have an announcement document, and then we also have other document. And that's about it. We do have a potential username of contact. But yeah, 
So looking at these uploads, um, it looks like it's just the date-upload.pdf. So what I'm going to try to do is access the root to see if there's other documents here. The root is disabled or a directory listing is disabled. But we can quickly build a word list of this date and try to get something out of it. So let's do that. I'm going to do use the date command. If I do um, just date, we can see what it is. If I specify date equals and say one day ago, we have that. And then you can do plus and change like the format. So um, percent Y is just going to output the year. So year, month, day, dash upload.pdf. And that looks good. So the next thing we have to do is probably do all 2020 things. So let's try 300 days ago to see where this is. The 30th, let's add 30 days. Now we're at December 31st. So we can do 4i in sequence 330 and we want to add 365 to that. So 395 do and change this to be the variable. And this is going to be numbers 330 to 395. And then say done. And we've quickly built a list, but I am off. Let's see, because that's stopping 2020, 10, 27. Actually, I went, what? Let's see, 2020, 12, 31. Oh, shoot. <laughs> well, that's embarrassing. Um, 695. Screwed up my addition a little bit, forgot about the hundreds, but there we go. So we can do this to, um, I guess I can call this files. And then the other thing I want to do is I'm going to use curl. I could also use wget. Um, let's, really, let's just use wget. So make der PDF. And the whole like internal debate between curl and wget, we can show this real quick. So if I just do curl-o test.pdf, I'm going to do wget on the same thing. I'm going to run exif tool on both of those. So 2020, we can see the file modification date. And if I look at the curl, exif tool, uh, what is it, um, test, we can see it kept that timestamp. It did not obey that timestamp. If you do use curl and you specify the dash capital R flag, we can look at that again, and now it did preserve the timestamp. Also, it set it to access. Um, not really important there, but I'm going to default to wget because wget by default will keep the same file name. So let's do that date command again. Uh, actually, we have files. So cat dot dot slash files. There we go. So I can do for i in this do if i echo i done it's just going to echo all of those so http 10 10 10 248 slash is it documents yep document slash i so now it's going to output all those and we just w get uh not found oh it's getting a lot of not founds because some of those files don't exist so let's look at PDF, do we start having some files? We do have some files. So it looks like there's a bunch in November. So I'm going to take a look at some of these PDFs real quick, to just look at what the metadata is. Let's see. I wonder how I can grab everything up to the semicolon. I think grep op. And we can say star dot semicolon. Like that. Is it capital O? lowercase p, let's see. Instead of grep, we can just do awk and set the field separator to semicolon and then print one. And the whole reason I was doing that is so I can do this sort u. And what this allows me to do is look at all the um, mime types, not, not mime types, whatever this piece of exif tool is, all the things. So I can see there is a creator. Um, Oftentimes, there may be more than one way to put a username in the metadata. So maybe there's an author tag or something, but it looks like the only thing is creator. 
We can also do a LSLA now that this is done. Actually, exif tool now that this is done. And look at the modification date time. So I'm going to do is grep on that. And then we can sort dash u and everything is the same. So let's grab out the author. Was it author or creator? Creator. And then let's do the same thing, alt dash f to split it. Oh, uh, that's not a good thing because we got that space. So we got one, two, three. So the default separator is like space or tab, I believe. So if I do awk print three, now we have just a list of usernames. So what I'm going to do is we're gonna run a tool called Kerbrute. And I'm just going to grab it from my box somewhere. And I put that um, dollar sign because this is end of line, this is regex. So I'm looking for all files that end in Kerbrute. And we can just uh, copy it. So CP. And if you don't know what tool I'm using, just go to GitHub Kerbroot. And it is right here. So let's do dot slash Kerbroot. And we can do user enum DC 10 10 10 dash domain intelligence dot HDB. And look at users. 84. Wow. Uh, doing a WC. It looks like every single user is valid. So I'm just going to um, verify what I did was correct by creating a test file with a user that doesn't exist to make sure it didn't say this one was valid because um, we want to make sure we aren't getting like a false positive. So everything in that user list is good. Uh, what we should do now is set up some type of recon in the background. So I'm going to do password spray. And then we can say um, users. And what is this? So we can say like everything was in April 2020. So I'm going to say winter 2020 bang. And we can let this run while we look at other things. That was quick. Um, could also do summer 2020 bang. The reason why I always do the bang is because it's like the most common last character of a password and windows complexity generally requires you to do a symbol. So just like winter 2020 probably wouldn't be a compliant password. But what I want to do is grab all these PDFs and read them. So I'm going to do PDF to text. And if you don't have this, I think it's just in the apt repo, but we can do star.pdf. And that did not work. Uh, we can do for i n l s do pdf to text i done. Sweet. Now we have a list of all texts. So I can cat star dot text, and then we can grep dash i on like password, and we have a hit. So we can do like dash B5 dash A5 to get before and after five lines. And we have the password here. Um, another way we could have went about that is do a four I in LS again, and then do echo I grep password I, and then done. We probably want to do a dash I to make it not case sensitive. But now it's outputting uh, ls star.txt. And we can see this file exists in this, June 4th. So if I less that, we can get the whole file there. But we do have new intelligence corp user 9876. And oddly enough, it doesn't have a special character in it. So maybe I was wrong about that. Um, we have valid login with error, and the error is clock skew is too great because we are doing some type of Kerberos login. We could make this go away using the NTP command, but I think that's going to be an issue later on in the video, so I want to put it uh, that section right next to that. But we do have Tiffany Merlina with that password. 
So we can go back to crack map exec, smb 10.10.10.248-u-p. Dash dash we can grab this password again and see what we have access to. So smb, nothing. Let's try winrm. And we're probably going to get nothing here as well. We can do uh, smb and then add dash dash shares. And we could also run Bloodhound. So we'll probably do that in a minute. But we do have a list of all the shares. We could manually enumerate this, but that could take some time. So I'm just going to run the spider plus query. And I'll put time before crack map exec so we can see how long this query took. But while that goes, again, I always like having recon going in the background while I work. So the spider plus is my background work. Um, let's see. Let's do crack map exec again, and I'm going to do SMB 10101010248-u, Tiffany, Melina, dash P, put this, and we can say dash dash pass pol to get the password policy, because I want to see if um, it's forcing special characters. So now that we have a single account, uh, password, let's see, what complexity? Password complexity is not set, so that's why we did not need a special character there. Um, the next thing I want to do is, let's go to Python Bloodhound. Um, it's probably in my opt, right? ls grep python grep blood. Let's see. Bloodhound python. We can just download that. Bloodhound.py. That's probably there, actually. So ls grep dash i blood. Yep, I have bloodhound.py there. And let's move all this old data. And I'm just going to git pull to make sure it's up to date. And it looks like it is. So we can do python 3 bloodhound.py. And let's see. We want to specify domain of intelligence.htb. Uh, DC, we can do 10.10.10.248, dash U, Tiffany, Morlina, at Intel, oh, we specified domain, so I don't think we have to specify that, dash P, that is not the password, let's go and grab it, and crack map exec has finished, and I think I want to do like dash C all, Let's see. Yeah, we can do collection method all. So now that's uh, 10, t forgot a 10 there. Let's see, specify name server 10, 10, 10, 248. Let's see, specified domain controller 10, 10, 10, 48, but requires a host name. So DC, um, what do we call this? Let's Etsy Hearst. Was it dc.intelligence.htb? It is. So we can put that here. DC intelligence htb. And we're missing digest mod. So um, let's see. How do we fix this one? Uh, I'm using Python 3.9. I think I have 3.8 installed as well. There we go. So I just need to switch Python versions because that's where that dependency is. But while Bloodhound runs, we can now go back to our crack map exec. So if I look at this, it's going to say, where is it storing data? Should be opt CME spider plus. So if I cat this, we have a list of all the files. Since it is JSON data, we can parse it in JQ. And then I'm going to look at the keys, which is going to be all the file shares. And if I do map values on keys, we have a list of file shares in files. So it looks like we have access to um, user.txt. So we could get the user. There is some PowerShell files here. I'm just glancing over. These are LNK. I'm not really interested in LNK files right now, so I'm going to grep-v LNK. 
And let's see, what else is there? BLF, INI, those aren't really interesting. The only PowerShell file that would be interesting is like a script or a log file. Like if I had the console script logging, that would be really good. Uh, we have sysvol. This is just group policy stuff. It's relatively empty, so there's no real group policy. In the IT folder, there is downdetector.ps1. So that's the, really the only thing. So let's go and download that. Um, I'm just going to use SMB client. I know we could use crackmap exec to download it, but I don't know the syntax off the top of my head to do that. But I do know SMB clients, so that's why I'm just going to default to that. Doesn't really matter what tool you use as long as you use a tool that works. So let's see, slash IT, put the password in. And I didn't have to specify the domain because this is a domain controller. Um, typically, you would probably have to, like, um, do intelligence like that and specify the domain to log in. But domain controllers, you don't need to know the domain. Uh, let's get down detector.ps1. File has been downloaded. We also have Bloodhound done. Um, this is weird. A DNS timeout there. We could probably edit a host file and point this host name to the actual DC, but you shouldn't have to do that. Um, I'm going to do nslookup in 10, 10, 10, 248. Uh, actually, nslookup and then set server 10, 10, 10, 248. And paste in this. Actually, server 10, whoops, 10, 10, 10, 248. Paste, get rid of that semicolon. And it doesn't look like that domain exists or that host exists on the box. Um, I'm guessing this is like a client. And for some reason, the workstation left the domain so it no longer exists. Um, let's see. Let's just look at down detector first and see what we have. So we're importing Active Directory and it's going to go in the DNS. I'm going to take all the object names that start with web and attempt to download it using default credentials and then send a message from Ted Graves to Ted Graves saying the record is down. So it looks like it's just crawling the um, DNS of this box and then anything that has a web, it's attempting to do a git request on it and then um, if it fails, it sends an email. Let's go take a look at the Bloodhound data. So I'm going to do sudo near4j console to start up the GraphQL database, or near4j database, I should say, I think. And then we run Bloodhound. And we'll also have to go to where the data is, which is in opt, I think, bloodhound.py. And we have all these JSON files. So we can upload that to Bloodhound and take a look. Let's see, everything is done. Let's do analysis. We can say find all domain admins. And there's just one, administrator. Shortest path. Uh, we, have, we have to be an enterprise admin, administrators, or the administrator user. That's not really helpful. We can look at DC sync rights. And this is the domain controller, and that's administrator again. Um, let's see. Shortest path. Kerberosable members. List all Kerberos accounts, only care BTGT. AS rep roast, nothing there. Uh, we can mark our user as owned. So if I do Tiffany Merlina, and we can say mark as owned, and then do shortest path from owned principles. See if she can get anywhere. She can't. We can look at what groups she is a part of. So first degree group membership, domain users, uh, unrolled group membership, domain user authenticated user, pre-Windows 2000 certificate, users, everyone. So there's nothing really interesting about Tiffany. Let's take a look at other users on this box. So I'm going to do craft map exec. We can probably just do that. Instead of passpol, I'm just going to do dash dash users. We could also, in Bloodhound, like hit enter and get users this way. But if you did this on a domain, it would be 
horrible. You could also like um, just go and look at each group. But I do like looking at it this way. So we do have a lot of users here. And um, Crack Map Exec also says the last time they had a bad password attempt, which is nice. I wish it outputted the password reset time. I bet there's a flag to do that. Let's see, administrator. Surprised it didn't get all those users. Let's see, is there a Ted Graves? Drew Ted, yep, there is. But I can click on SVC int. I'm not actually sure what like searching nothing did. I should do the Bloodhound Academy module again because it goes into like writing custom cipher queries and everything that I continuously forget. But we look at this account, this SVC int. This is also where we had the error message. I'm gonna mark it as high value. And we can see how we get to this. So shortest path to here. And let's see, it looks like it is a um, group managed service account. Because I see all this read GMSA. And group managed service accounts essentially, um, think of it like a machine account. It rotates its password every X days, I wanna say every 30 days, and it's like a 128 random character thing. So you're not gonna brute force these accounts. And let's see. We have Ted Graves, Laura can um, read GMSA password, and all extended rights is Ted Administrator. So we want to get to these accounts. Ted Graves, so I'm going to mark him as high value, and Laura as high value as well. And I'm going to go back to the analysis. I'm going to do shortest path to high value targets. And this is a mess. Let's see, Administrator, Domain Admins. That's not good, not good. Ted Graves. So there's no real way to get to Ted Graves. Laura looks like there's no way because all like this left side is all domain administrators. Um, SVC int. We have delegation here. So if we can get onto SVC int, we're allowed to delegate over to the domain controller. So this is probably a constrained delegation thing. And if you're ever curious like what these mean, you can right click on the edge, do help, and it talks about it. But we're not that far yet. So um, let's go back to that down detector. Because we know we want to get to either this user, Ted Graves, or Laura. So the one thing about Active Directory is um, anyone can create a domain entry because it has like this whole dynamic DNS thing. Um, you can harden it so users can't, but typically like when you get a DHCP request, um, the machine goes and updates the um, Active Directory to create like the reverse lookup and everything. So you have a domain name. Uh, we can do that as a user potentially using a tool called DNS tool. And do I have this? No, this is not it. Um, it's out of um, Caribbean Relay X, which I don't think I've have on this machine because we haven't really done any relay attacks or anything. But um, let's do Caribbean Relay X, and we can specify GitHub as well. And clone this. Is there a good way to download this? Does he have install instructions? Nope. So let's just download. So git clone, go in here. Then we have DNS tool, so Python 3.8, DNS tool dash H, and gives the help. If I just do DNS tool, we have everything we need. So dash U, we want to specify intelligence slash Tiffany Molina, and put this in single quotes because we have a backslash, which is a special character, dash P. Uh, let's grab the password here. Then the next thing we need is, um, let's see, R for target record. Let's do web um, ipsec.intelligence.htb dash A for action. We want to add the type. Let's do an A record, uh, the dash D for record data. We're going to point it to ourselves at 10.10.14.8. And then the 
host name of the box we want it on is 1010248. So let's try this to see exactly what happens. Binding to host, and we have added it. So what I'm going to do is also do nclvnp80 and see if it connects back to me. And then if it gets connects back to me, we know the down detector is running on some type of script, which means um, we may be able to use responder or something to steal a hash. I'm just right now viewing it to make sure it would be indeed on port 80 and looks like it is. And use default credentials, so it should use the credentials of whoever is running the script. So yeah, now it's just a waiting game to see exactly how it connects to us, or if it does. And we do have it connect back to us. Um, the host is set to web 9001 because when I was doing this box before recording, that is what I had set it to. But if I um, go NS lookup, server 10.10.10.248, and I say web ipsec.intelligence.htb, it also points back to me. Uh, web 9001 intelligence.htb does as well. And if I did like 9000, this is not one I tested with, we see it doesn't go back to me. So now we just need to run Python. So I can do Python, or not Python, we need to run responder. So responder dash i ton zero. And oh man, I'm always having these issues with this. Let's see, user share responder. Can I do Python 3.8 here? Pseudo Python 3.8 uh, responder.py. No option DCE RPC. Let's see. I only have 3 and 3 9. So I may not be doing this box with responder. Um, you should be able to just do responder and then it connects back to responder's web interface and it forwards it to a um, NTLM request, which then it logs in, you steal the hash. But Responder's not working, so I'm going to switch over to MSF uh, Metasploit. I'm going to try it with an auxiliary script. Um, have not actually done this, so I'm not positive. Uh, let's do use auxiliary server, then capture, and then after capture, we probably want to do, oh, is it HTTP or HTTP NTLM? Probably HTTP NTLM, and then show options. Let's set serve port to be 80. Set URI path to be just slash. And set serve host to 10.10.14.8. And that looks, what? Oh, SRV, there we go. That's why you always show options before running it. And I'm also going to set the John PW file to be intelligence. So we actually save it to a file. And then we'll try to crack this with Hashcat, but chances are we'll probably have to use John the Ripper to crack it. But we run this, we have started the auxiliary server. Um, and if I do a lookup on web9001 intelligence.htb or web ipsec.intelligence.htb. They both still point to me. So if the server connects back to me, we should have something. Um, Metasploit isn't good at telling you when it connects and um, doesn't give you a hash. I probably could have set it like in verbose mode. Um, I'm looking at the headers and we can see I do a git on slash and it tells me to authenticate via NTLM. So when PowerShell sees that, hopefully it attempts to log in with the default credentials. But uh, since I didn't set this in verbose mode, I'm going to do sudo tcp dump dash i ton zero port 80. I'm also going to do dash n and throw a few dash v's. So this way, um, if anything connects back to me on port 80, I'll see it. And that means if this fails for whatever reason, I'll know. 
So I'm gonna pause the video and we'll just wait for it to connect, which could be a few minutes. And it looks like we have a hit. So we captured a credential from Ted Graves. We have this NT hash, is this NTLM? Let's see, let's copy um, echo dash N, WC dash C, 32. I really don't think that's an NTLM hash. I didn't think we'd be able to get that. Well, maybe we could. Um, the way we can validate that is crack map exec. So SMB dash U Ted Graves. Uh, let's see, is it dash H for hash? Probably dash capital H, right? H, let's see. Uh, we did not specify an IP. 10, 10, 10, 248. Let's see what happens. So, yeah, it did not, because it's an NTLM v2 hash, so you need to use this client. Uh, let's see, yeah, it says it right here. Um, it's been a while since I've used Metasploit to do this, but glad to know it still works. If I look at ls here, what do we call it? N intelligence NTLM. So we have the capture file right here. And maybe this will work with Hashcat. Uh, that's a blank hash. Let's cat this one. There we go. So, let's see. Yeah, this is valid. Um, I'm gonna go into the Kraken, which I don't have right now running. I thought I would have it up. Um, shoot. I guess let's just crack this with John. So, John, let's see. Specify this, and then word list is equal to user share, uh, let's see, ls user share word list rocku.txt. And we'll see how long this takes. Hopefully not too long. It's got two passwords in it, and it's attempting to crack, and it looks like it did. Uh, I think the password is mr.teddy. <laughs> I'm going to do dash dash show real quick to see what it is, and indeed, the password is Mr.Teddy. So let's go back to that crack map, and we can do dash P, put that as the password, and boom, we have that credential. However, it doesn't let us log in on the server, but when we looked at um, this, Let's see, where is Ted? Is this one Ted? Yeah. I'm trying to make this graph pretty. Let's just do right click, shortest path to here, to this account. We can see Ted has read GMSA password because he's an IT support to this account, which is allowed to delegate. So if I do help on this, let's see, abuse info, uh, let's see, is this a, oh, this is an executable. Um, I want to say there's a, uh, Python option now. Let's do read GMSA password, um, Python GitHub. Let's see, GMSA dumper. Python 3, user pass domain. Let's try this. Probably have to use Python 3.8 again. But that's not a problem, so git clone, go in here, python 3.8, let's see, dash u, intelligence, Ted Graves, put that in single quotes, dash p, Mr. Teddy, uh, dash d, intelligence.htb. See, ntlm needs domain slash user and a password. Thought I did that. Dash U, dash P. Let's do dash L as well. 10, 10, 10, 248. Let's see. U, P, D, L. Is it a forward slash it's looking for?
So we're getting an LDAP bind error now. Let's see, authentication NTLM. Is this actually expecting an NTLM hash to authenticate? It's possible. That would be silly. Is that a different error message than when I did a backslash? NTLM needs domain slash username. Let's do two backslashes. So I think it really wants slash. And now I think we are erroring because it's expecting. Let's see, what is the password? Where would I have that at? That's not it. MR. This is definitely it. Huh. I'm going to do date and we're going to set NTP date 10 10 10 248. And make sure our time is correct. And if our time is correct, and it still errors, I'm going to convert this over to a NTLM hash, and we're going to try it again. Uh, let's see. Is this going to work? Nope. So let's go to Google, uh, generate NTLM hash. This, paste, K. Okay. Dash P. Still erroring out. So that was not it. This is a head scratcher now. I'm gonna try removing the domain altogether because when I did this slash, it had something weird. This got rid of that error message. But maybe it got rid of the error message for the wrong way. I did specify dash D right here. So maybe it's smart enough to put the domain in the user. And boom, that was definitely it. Awesome. So now we have the hash for this um, account. And we could probably validate it, I think, with crack map exec. So crack map exec SMB 10 10 10 248 dash U SVC int dash P, uh, we want dash capital H. And whenever it ends with a um, dollar sign, that means it's either a machine account or a managed service account. So doing this, we can't win our M. We still can't um, PS exec. However, we can generate a silver ticket. So with the silver ticket, if you don't have your date synced, you definitely do need to. So I'm going to run NTP date again just to validate our time is synced. And once this gets back, we can begin the silver ticket, which I want to say um, is probably an impacket, honestly. So user share impacket examples. Let's see. That's not where it is. Let's try opt impacket examples here it is and the script we want is git st for git silver ticket so i'm going to do python 3 8 git st dot pi and we have to set the spn uh i think it's http dc intelligence dot hdb dash impersonate we want to impersonate the administrator and then we give it the domain, so intelligence, as long as it can spell correctly, SVC INT. And I want to say I need the dollar sign. If I if it doesn't work, then I'm going to um, try it without it. And let's see. Here's the hash. And I'm going to do the hash colon the hash because this is the landman and this is ntlm new technology landman and for some reason everything likes having um 
this format. And it doesn't even use Landman anymore. But, yeah. Let's see. SPN is not allowed to delegate. Um, let's take this dollar off. And then if that isn't it, maybe it's um, dub, dub, dub. Let's try dub, dub, dub. Because this is an IIS server. There we go. Saving ticket to administrator.cache. So we can export KB 5 cc name is equal to administrator.cc cache. And we can just do impacket uh, ps exec dash k no pass dc intelligence.htb. And it should pull this ticket for my um, impacket. Uh, pre auth failed. Let's try WMI exec maybe. Did I screw something up? Let's see. KDC pre authentication information was invalid. Let's set the date again. Maybe for some reason, like my VMware tools sync the clock back and my time wasn't in sync. No, I was within a second. Let's see. Um, oh, I probably need administrator at this. KDC pre auth failed. Pre authentication information was invalid. This is not going to plan. <laughs> uh, 10, 10, 10, for, uh, 10, 10, yeah, 10, 248. And min is straighter. Let's try this server ticket again. Let's see. Alas, let's move this into my home directory. I don't think that matters. Let's see. No, if I get rid of all these, it's going to ask me for a password, right? It does. see let's just take a step back and redo the whole silver ticket attack because everything is pretty pretty picky so we're doing a get silver ticket specifying the spn impersonating administrator we don't have a fully qualified domain name here so let's try putting it uh we have the uh, group managed service account and the hash okay so now we can copy this administrator thing into our home directory, and we should be able to export care b 5 cc name administrator.cc cache. Let's not put a trailing space there. Maybe that was it. That would be a really stupid thing, but I've seen worse. So let's do impacket ps exec dash k dash no pass. And then we'll also specify the full domain slash administrator at 10, 10, 10, 248. Let's see if this works. Okay, that doesn't. We, let's do it without environment variables. PS exec dash K, no pass. Uh, we can just copy this actually. Copy, paste. Okay. Let's do the fully qualified domain name here. So dc.intelligence.htb. And there we go. That was it. We needed that combination. And we are now system on this box. So we could go get the root flag. Out of curiosity, I'm just going to take this out because it is in my environment variable. So was that the issue? Yep. So that was the issue. Um, Hope you guys enjoyed that box. Take care, and I will see you all next week.